Unhappiness comes from letting other people influence our emotions. Unhappiness also comes from not taking a moment to recognize the progress you're making. Happiness equals progress. Progress will produce happiness. When you feel you're moving forward, you become happy. Whenever we feel that we're moving backwards, we become unhappy. That we're not making progress, we become unhappy. Welcome to Think Like a Champion. This podcast is dedicated to help you win in every way and enjoy every day. And as champions, I want to remind everybody, the Word of God is the well from which champions drink. It is the well from which true champions drink. Kind of like Michael Jordan's secret stuff in Space Jam or Red Bull that gives us wings. It gives us the power. It gives us the playbook. It gives us the master plan for being champions in life. So if you don't consider yourself a Christian or maybe you aren't much of a churchy kind of person, that's okay. My challenge to you is to just open up your heart to God. Stay open to the truths that transform your life. There's going to be some truths that will make a difference for you today. I believe this is for you. Listen now, as you begin to think like a champion, uh, no champion ever wins alone. E even if it's a singular sport, an indiv individual sport, it's true also that that person has coaches and family and um, mentors and people that have taught, encouraged, stayed with, prayed with, and strengthened that person to be a champion. And this is what we all need. We all need mentors. We all need the coaching and the encouragement. And with God's word as our playbook, we can't fail. You, you, you can have guaranteed success when you experience God's way of doing things, God's way of thinking, which produces God's way of doing. Um, now, one quick note, if you've subscribed to, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our, uh, our program and our podcast, make sure to subscribe uh, on YouTube or Apple, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss an episode. And as always, I want to invite you to partner with me in helping us move our mission forward, your gift of any amount. It makes a huge difference and a huge impact in more people's lives that we're able to reach together. We can always do better together. And I want to do everything I can to bring you value through God's wisdom, through my life's experiences. If you feel this adds value to you, to your life, to your leadership, if you get anything out of this, consider joining me. Consider becoming a, a part of our community of champions. Help me get this to the world. Help me get to more people. You can partner with me by going to lifechangerschurch.com slash give. And I want to thank you in advance, lifechangerschurch.com slash give. Now, let's get into today's content because we're going to talk about our emotions. We're going to talk about um, our crown. We're going to talk about victory. We're going to talk about mastering ourselves. One of the things I've tried to get across to the people in my life, every one of us has the power to master our emotions. So many of our life decisions are bad decisions because of negative emotions that fed into a negative decision or a negative result. And I want us to reverse that, to reverse the curse, so to speak. And I want you to realize how much power you have we, and how often we surrender our emotions to others. We surrender our emotions to the way we're treated. We surrender our emotions to the way we're mistreated. We surrender our emotions to the news of the day, the political climate, the tragedies that happen in this world, the feeling less than when we compare, compare ourselves to others, when we look at other people's social media and we get nervous or insecure about our own we, we, or any area of life, your, your body, your health, your, your financial condition, your family. We have to take this power back. This is your superpower. If you ever wondered, do you have a superpower? This is your superpower, the ability to be in control of your emotions. It doesn't mean that you never feel emotions. I feel emotions sometimes very deeply, sometimes too deeply. But what keeps me happy and what keeps me healthy and what keeps me free is knowing that I have the power to control my reactions. I have the power to control my attitude towards anything life brings. I've learned to become a good apologizer. I've learned to become a good ask for forgiveness kind of person. Like 
it's not hard for me anymore to ask somebody to forgive me because I have done it so many times, needed it so many times that uh, it becomes it becomes a, a true part of our character and not that we should be apologizing for existing, not that we should be apologizing because we're worried about what everybody thinks. But I mean, when we truly wrong somebody, when we truly let ourselves get out of control and it affects somebody else, that's where I mean I'm asking somebody to forgive me because I, I know I catch myself faster these days than maybe I used to. And there's this amazing verse in Scripture. Jesus says something very powerful in the book of Revelation. It's one of my favorite verses of all the beautiful verses in the Bible. Jesus said in Revelation 3.11, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast to what you have received. Let no one take your crown. He said, hold fast to what you've received. He said, I'm coming quickly, meaning it may not be soon. Quickly is different than soon. Jesus said, I'm coming quickly. In other words, it's going to happen so fast. You will, have, if you blink, you will have missed it. Not that you have to worry about that because when he comes, he's coming for you. He's coming back for you, not to judge you, but take you home to be with him forever. But the point is, is he said, I'm, I'm coming quickly. It's going to happen so fast. You're not, you're going to see the world moving very slowly. You're going to see life seeming like it's just another day. And all of the sudden, Jesus is going to come back. Well, anyway, the point is, he said, I'm coming quickly. Hold fast. Hold on. Hold firmly. Be quick to hold on to this. Be fast to hold on to this. And he says to whatever you've received, let no one take your crown. Hold fast to what you've received. We, we have received. Now think about it. We've received salvation. We've received the love of God. We've received the goodness of God. We've received uh, a new spirit. We've received a new day. We've received power, love and a sound mind. We've received we've received the promises of God, 7000 of them. We've received all these through the blood of Jesus. And Jesus tells us, let no one take your crown. Let no one take your crown. Let no one take your crown. Now, your crown is the symbol of your royalty. It's the symbol of your power. It's the symbol that you have power. A crown gives a person power. If, you, if it's a legitimate crown, a, a crown represents royalty. So to me, when Jesus says, let no one take your crown, it's, it's, your, it's your royalty. Let no one talk you out of who you are in Christ. It's your, it's your power. Let no one talk you out of the power that you have over the devil and over life, and over life's worries and fears. This crown represents our brain. This crown represents our soul. What is our soul? Our soul is the, our mind to think, our heart to feel, and our will to decide. Our mind to think, our heart to feel, and our will to decide. Let no one take your soul. Let no one take your power. Let no one take your royalty. He says, let no one usurp the power that you have over your soul. It's your emotions. And these emotions, as the Bible says, are emotions. They are motions that are trying to move you and create motion one way or another. So what do we do with negative emotions? We number one, we have to we have to give ourselves permission to feel them. It's not wrong to feel negative emotions. It's not wrong to feel hate. It's not wrong to feel fear. It's not wrong to fear to feel lust. It's not wrong to feel anxious. It's wrong to be ruled by those things. It's not wrong to feel those things. It's, it's wrong to allow those emotions to dictate your decisions and your choices in life. But it's not wrong to feel them. So many people are struggling. They're they're fighting the wrong fight. They're fighting the feeling of having these things rather than fighting to control these things. We should be fighting with the fighting with the thoughts that tell us we're not masters over these emotions. We need to reject and resist the lie that tells us we're not truly masters of our emotions. Our emotions are masters over us. That's a lie that your emotions have to rule you or control you. Whether no matter what you believe your excuse or reason might be, you have power over your emotions. So listen, feel them, give yourself permission to feel them, reveal them, open yourself up to God, open yourself up to somebody that could pray with you, 
Feel them, reveal them, and God will heal them. Feel them, reveal them. God, this is what I'm struggling with. Or say to somebody you trust, somebody you know is a mentor. Hey, I just want you to know I need your help. I'm struggling with something. Just pray for me. Or if you have a word of encouragement for me, I'll take it. Listen, if you feel negative emotions, if you reveal negative emotions, God will heal you of negative emotions. Go to God. Ask him. Let's go to him right now. Maybe you're full of anger. Maybe you're full of fear. Maybe you're full of hate. Maybe you're full of bitterness. Let's go to God right now. Come on, let's go together. Let's do this right now. We can go boldly to God. Come on, let's do it. Just pray this. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Just say that. Heavenly Father, I thank you for allowing me to give myself permission to feel my negative emotions. Come on, just pray that. Just, just repeat it after me. Thank you for giving me permission to feel these negative emotions. I feel them, and now, Heavenly Father, repeat that. I feel them, and now, Heavenly Father, I reveal them to you. I'm, I've been angry. I've had hate. I have been in fear. I've been worried. I have been impatient. I've been unkind. I turn these emotions over to you. I reveal them to you. I surrender them to you. And I invite you to heal me of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Feel them, reveal them, and now trust that God is healing them. Now, what do we do when somebody does something to wreck our day? Uh, now, because I've learned, I'm, I'm, I think I'm on the other side of allowing anyone to wreck my day or my week or my year or my life. Now, I think I'm still working on people that wreck my moments. There's, <laughs> there's some moments that I have that, that sometimes people get the best of me. Sometimes, you know, I... I I, I stumble or crumble or fail for a, a moment or a few moments or more than moments. But uh, no one can throw me off. No one can throw you off your true peace if you would know your power and know that it's up to you and me to decide whether we're going to let somebody take our crown. When Jesus said, let no one take your crown, it means we either allow them to or we re refuse to allow them to. But it's it's our choice. Let them or don't let them. But I choose to not to let them. Let no one take your crown. This mentality, if you will just address this, this mentality that, that your happiness doesn't come from what somebody does to you. Your happiness doesn't come from, or your unhappiness doesn't come from what somebody does to you. Your unhappiness comes from giving people power to influence our emotions. We have to take this power back. We've all done it. We, we bought something because it was emotional. We, it wasn't practical. We didn't really need it, but they got us in the emotional realm. They got us in that. They pulled the heartstrings, right? It was emotional buying or emotional eating. This is a real problem because our emotions, generally speaking, our emotions are like children. Our brain is the parent. If you look at your, your individual life like a family, your brain is the parent. Your emotions are the children. Emotions are good if you have them under control. Children are good if you have them under control. If you would realize it, make sure that you allow the brain to be the parent. Allow your mind to be the parent. It's true in life we need to follow our heart, but only if we take our brain with us, okay? This is also the source of most of the addictions that we crater to. We allow someone else to control them. We allow somebody else to rule them. We give people influence over our emotions. But if we, if we will make up our mind, our emotions are like my kids. You know, a lot of parents struggle with keeping their kids under control. You know, if you would master your emotions, you would be able to have control over your children. 
it starts with you. Don't allow your children to influence which emotions you're going to follow, which emotions you're going to listen to, which emotions you're going to allow to, to run your life. So unhappiness comes and God wants us to be happy this year. God wants us to be happy this month, next month, next year, the next year, the year forever. He wants us to be happy people. God said, happy are the people who know their God. Happy are the people who are created by God. Happy are the people that make the Lord their righteousness. Happy are the people that allow God to lead their lives. God's I happiness was God's idea. Unhappiness comes from letting other people influence our emotions. Unhappiness also comes from not taking a moment to recognize the progress you're making. Happiness equals progress. Progress will produce happiness. When you feel you're moving forward, you become happy. Whenever we feel that we're moving backwards, we become unhappy. That we're not making progress, we become unhappy. So what we have to do is we have to engage in choices that will bring us pro progress, process that produces progress. Listen, no matter how far you are away from your goal financially, from your goal emotionally, from your goal in your family, from your spiritual goals, your emotional goals, your physical goals, your financial goals, no matter how far you are from those goals, if you're making progress towards them, happiness, the, obtain, the, the attainment of those things is not what produces happy, happiness, but the, prog, the progress towards those things is what produces happiness. Science, science has demonstrated the feelings of forward progress release chemicals in the brain that make us feel high or make us feel happy, and those same chemicals give us the energy to take the next step. Those same chemicals give us the energy to take the next step. You know, in the scripture that I've alluded to before in Luke chapter 19, when it talks about the 10 lepers that were cleansed, or chapter 17, it says in verse 12, as he was going into a village, 10 men had leprosy, and they stood at a distance. They said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And, and one of them, and he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 14 says, as they went, they were cleansed or they were healed. One of them, as we know, one out of the 10, when he saw that he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and Jesus said, we're not 10 cleansed, where are the other nine? And he said, rise, he said, go, your faith has made you well. See, this man, when he turned back to Jesus, he was making progress. When he turned back to Jesus, when he saw that he was healed, when he saw progress was made, it made him rejoice. It made him glorify God. It made him thank God. It made him thankful. He saw the progress. The others were focused on just the next step, but this one was focused on the step that just occurred, the miracle that just occurred, the cleansing that just happened. And he looked at that and he focused on that focused on the progress that he made and it produced joy, gladness, rejoicing, celebration. And we really need to stop when we see progress in our lives and give God thanks and give God praise and thank anybody that's helped you make that progress. When you see progress in your life, in any realm of life, stop and recognize it. Stop and make note of it. Stop and and take a moment to give God thanks because it will produce super, the supernatural God-ordained chemicals of happiness that will not only give you joy, but it will give you strength because the joy of the Lord is our strength, the Bible says. So when we have joy, we have strength. Most, most misery in life is because, or most weakness in life is because of a lack of joy. It's misery. When you feel miserable, you feel weak, it weakens you, but joy strengthens you. And joy comes from stopping and recognizing the progress that you're making. And be good with that. Be happy about that. Doesn't mean you have to end the progress there. It just means you recognize the progress there. So as we 
move towards these sources of unhappiness, as we move to attack these sources of unhappiness, the outcome is you, you begin to experience positive emotions. Ne uh, negative emotions lose their power over you. Another place that unhappiness comes from is blaming other people, shifting the blame to someone else. This has this been happening since, since the earth was created, since man was created by God. In Genesis 3.10, we, we know this is true. We know that God, after Adam and Eve sinned, God said to them in verse 10, where are you? Have you eaten? He said, where are you, Adam? Where'd you go? Have you eaten from the tree I told you not to eat from? And Adam's first response was, the woman you gave me, the woman you gave me, she made me do it. Isn't this funny that from, <laughs> this is where the first blame, the first victim mindset entered into, um, into the earth. It was that in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, in one sentence, Adam becomes a victim of two people he blamed. He blamed the woman and he blamed God. He said, <laughs> he said, the woman that you gave me. So not only is it her fault, but it's your fault for giving her to me. So <laughs> we have to laugh at this because what's even funnier is that God then turns to Eve. He says, OK, this is listening to Adam's excuses. God's like, this is nonsense. I'm not going to pay attention to this. He goes over to Eve and he said, what have you done? And she said, the serpent who you put in the garden, he deceived me. So now both of them have begun to create a life of shifting the blame. Both of them have become the authors of, of shifting blame. And their unhappiness comes from this blaming others, projecting blame. Mankind has been doing this ever since, projecting whatever it is that we don't like about ourselves. We point to someone else as the culprit for what we don't like about ourselves. We have to break out of this cycle when really that person is, that person is a gift from God actually is kind of, that person becomes a mirror to reveal what we're actually acting like, what we're actually behaving like. That's where we have to address ourselves. No one looks in the mirror and starts shaving someone else. You look in a mirror and start shaving yourself. You look in a mirror and start putting your own makeup on. The mirror is, is no, no one shaves the mirror either. We don't shave somebody else. We don't shave the mirror. The mirror only acts as a revealer. Don't try to change the mirror. The mirror is just the revealer of where we need to adjust. And we need to treat the Bible as a mirror to reveal our true selves to ourselves. We need to let the Bible be the mirror of what God, how God thinks of us as sons and daughters of God, as more than conquerors, as the head and not the tail, as true champions inside and out. So I kind of gave you three pictures of what produces unhappiness and controls our emotions and steals, gives people power to, to take our crown. We talk about giving people the power to influence our emotions. We talk about not making progress produces unhappiness, so we can, we can reverse that by recognizing the progress we're making. And blaming other people uh, causes us to be unhappy because we can't control other people. As much as we try, we can't. So then we get angry. See, we cannot allow ourselves to blame somebody for why we're in the situation we're in because if we do that, we're giving them complete power to determine whether we get out of the situation or not. These, these simple mind shifts, these simple, these simple th thoughts that we've had that, we, that have limited us and robbed us of our true authority and our true royalty and our true view of ourselves, it's easy to change these things. Just keep speaking over yourself that you are more than a conqueror. Speak over yourself that you're the head and not the tail. Speak over yourself that you have been given by God power, power over your emotions, love to overcome fear, and a sound mind to sort out your thinking. As you do that, you're going to win, and you're going to enjoy. You're going to win in every way, and you're going to enjoy every day. All right. We are out of time. We, this brings us to our next episode that you don't want to miss. But if you will take charge of your emotions today, 
take charge and say, today I will rule over my emotions. I will stop giving people power over my, over my emotions. I will stop and recognize the progress and give God thanks. I will stop blaming other people for why I feel the way I feel. You know what's going to happen? You're going to start seeing your dreams come true. You're going to start seeing your prayers answered. You're going to start seeing progress being made more than you ever thought possible above and beyond what you can ask or think. Okay. Remember to subscribe to this podcast and share this with someone. If it's been helpful to you and invite others to join with you. I hope our time together has helped you to think like a champion. Get ready to start winning in every way. Get ready to start enjoying every day. And join me and the entire Life Changers family for church this Sunday. I've got a special word for you. Tell someone, invite them, send the link, share this link with somebody. And listen, in two weeks, we will be starting our 2024 Fast from Wrong Thinking. What Fast from Wrong Thinking is, is it's true spiritual warfare. It is where we identify the major mindsets that limit us and defeat us. And we pull down those strongholds. We take those thoughts captive. We overcome those thoughts with God's way of thinking. We fast from wrong thinking. It's maybe you've been fasting from food and the only thing that you're getting is hungry. But if you fast from wrong thinking, it will cause you to make progress, supernatural progress as you apply yourself. And this is like five, six, seven minutes a day or less Maybe a few more if you want, but in that short time, one thought, if we attack one thought per day for 40 days, your life will be transformed. I've seen it happen to hundreds, thousands of people. We've been doing this for several years. It is a true part of what this ministry exists for, fasting from wrong thinking. I put all the 40 thoughts into this book. We'll talk more about it. You can sign up for free at fastfromwrongthinking.com, fastfromwrongthinking.com. And I can't wait to see you on our next podcast. You are a champion. Believe that and everything's going to be all right. God bless. <laughs>